Hello, Dr. Mark Daly here. On the last video, we talked about good bacteria and the very important role that they play in human health. We mentioned that friendly bacteria stimulate the production of antibodies in your blood, increasing your immune system strength and capacity to deal with toxins, allergens, harmful microorganisms, and incompletely digested proteins, how they produce nutrients that are essential to your health, like vitamin B12 and vitamin K, how they take up space and resources in your gut, which help to prevent infection by harmful bacteria, fungus, and parasites, how they produce a natural antibiotic, acids, and hydrogen peroxide, which also help to protect you against infection by harmful microorganisms, including bacteria that can cause food poisoning, and of course it helps you to digest food. Recognition that intestinal flora have a major impact on human health first developed with the birth of microbiology in the late 19th century. It's generally accepted that our relationship with indigenous gut flora is symbiotic, meaning a state of living together that's beneficial. A gentleman by the name of Michinkoff popularized the idea of dysbiosis, which is a state of living with intestinal flora that has harmful effects. He postulated that toxic amines produced by the bacterial putrefaction of food were the cause of degenerative disease and that ingestion of fermented foods containing lactobacillus, which is a probiotic or a good biotic, prolong life by decreasing gut putrefaction. Although his ideas have been largely ignored in the United States, they have influenced four generations of European physicians. The notion that dysbiotic relationships with gut microflora may influence the development of inflammatory diseases and cancer has received considerable experimental support over the past two decades, but the mechanisms are much more diverse than we originally thought. Intestinal dysbiosis should be considered as a mechanism promoting disease in all patients with chronic gastrointestinal inflammation, autoimmune disorders, inflammatory or, or food allergies or food intolerances, breast or colon cancer, unexplained fatigue, malnutrition, and even neuropsychiatric symptoms. The most useful test for this condition is a comprehensive digestive stool analysis, which many of you watching this video have done or are going to do as part of the program. Some have received their results, some may still be waiting for them. But to make this easy to understand, I want you to recognize that bad bacteria, which, is, which are known as opportunistic or pathogenic bacteria, means given the opportunity, these bacteria will proliferate, grow out of proportion compared to the beneficial bacteria. When this happens, the byproduct or the waste products of this overgrowth of bad bacteria not only interfere with the function of good bacteria, which are so very important, but they are also toxic to our system. This toxicity affects not only the gastrointestinal system, but the detoxification pathways are affected as well, which means toxins are backed up in our body creating a laundry list of symptoms. These symptoms range from gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, hives, acne, fatigue, muscle joints and aches, pains, brain fog. The list literally goes on and on. The bottom line is, if the balance of good bacteria shifts in the wrong direction, it opens the door for opportunistic as well as pathogenic bacteria like H. pylori to literally wreak havoc in our bodies. The toxins from the bad bacteria irritate the lining of your gut and cause additional inflammation which can lead to leaky gut syndrome, also known as intestinal hyperpermeability of the gut, which means that protective barrier keeping the bad bacteria or larger than normal proteins 
out of your blood breaks down. And now this bad bacteria or these larger than normal molecules get from the gut into the blood. This can lead to systemic inflammation, which means system-wide inflammation. So it's not just contained within the gut any longer. Now it's uh, now the immune system is involved and it can cause trouble in every area of your body. I think you can see why it is so very important to create balance in the gut flora. And again, the gut is a cornerstone to health. It's like the hub of a wheel. It touches every system of your body. So we're working diligently to get your gut in proper order. And these segments really have been meant to expand on some of the things we may not have time to talk about in the office. I know some of you have found out that you do have H. pylori. You do have yeast overgrowth. You do have bacterial dysbiosis. You do have so many of the things that, that we have been teaching about. So I didn't want to leave anyone out. I want you to recognize that these are all extremely important issues and probably 99.9% .9 of the people in our program have bacterial dysbiosis. So I hope you've learned something. Continue your study. Look it up online. Continue to learn. Continue to enrich your life. I know that this will add value to your life and be a, a key in you returning to optimal health. Thanks so much for your time and attention. God bless and have a great day.